How would you counter this viral clip? A lot of things will be hard for you. A lot of things will be hard for you to comprehend. That's why you're in sex work, because you can't offer value in the marketplace. This... What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna be hypercritical of every statement this guy makes because he's an idiot and because you should be better to... Yeah, like just, yeah. A lot of things will be hard for you to comprehend. That's why you're in sex work because you can't offer value in the marketplace. Okay, there's like three different non sequiturs here or two different ones, I think, okay? So number one is um, a lot of things will be hard for you to comprehend. Uh, that's why you're in sex work. None of this links. So a lot of things, first of all, that's vague, are hard for a lot of people to comprehend. Uh, depending on your job, right? But you'd never make this to like, a lot of things can be hard for you to comprehend because you're blue collar. A lot of things can be hard for you to comprehend because you're a janitor. A lot of things, like, people generally don't make the statements. For sex workers, what you're really saying is, f women who are sluts. That's really what you're saying. Just say that. But people like the scam artists will try to find ways to say it more, uh, I guess more eloquently, to, to, or more euphemistically, so that it sounds more um, enlightened. It sounds more, I don't know, like you're saying something more meaningful. You're in sex work because you can't offer value in the marketplace. When you say can't offer value in the marketplace, well, in which marketplace? Because in the sex work marketplace, clearly she offers value if she's making a lot of money on it. So that doesn't make any sense, right? A lot of people don't offer value across the entire marketplace. You only offer value in the place that you specialize in. We have a specialized economy. That's how labor works. Just like this Marquette guy or whatever only offers value in, I guess, scam artistry. That's all he does. That's why every startup that he was with failed. That's why the only awards that he ever posts are vague ones that he receives on behalf of companies that have never produced an actual or real product. That's why every past Twitter account associated with every business or idea that he's ever worked on has 4,000 followers and died four years ago. And that's why he lies about the background of his education, right? Is because he doesn't offer value except for YouTube and scamming stuff, which is fair. You've got YouTube videos and you do okayly there. I don't know how much of his botted and even with the bots accounted for, it's not that impressive, but sure. Uh, like, yeah, but that's standard. You don't offer value because, uh, you know, that's why you do this job. But if you do that job and you're getting compensated for it, by definition, there is a marketplace that does value you. So every part of this statement is stupid, right? Okay, moving on from this. Comprehend that's why you're in sex work because you can't offer value in the marketplace. What the f Don't worry, I'm not really talking to you. I'm speaking against you as a symbol. A symbol of what? A symbol of a declining society. And then the, always the vague like declining societies. Like again, not to knock anybody, but bro, we're YouTubers. Like what, why are you on this like, we're on some like paleo ultra trad, like live in the wilderness survival types. Like. Bro, you have a one button, like a one button vest. Like, what, what are we even talking about here? Like, a declining society. Like, a declining society is a man who pays a thousand dollars so that he can rent a helicopter for a day in New Jersey, uh, so that he can pretend like he takes one to go shopping. F I can't even find this video. It's such clown. Sh um, yeah, everything this guy talks about is like in these in the most broadest, vaguest sense, and then alluding back to these things. Like, none of what he's really saying is making sense. Like, this woman being a sex worker is evidenced by of a, or is evidence of a declining society hasn't prostitution existed literally since the advent of all economies like is this is this not colloquially referred to as the oldest job like what does that even mean was there a society without sex work was there a society without prostitutes was there a society where women you know didn't get paid for sex at some point like it doesn't nothing he's saying has made sense so far okay but let's keep going okay wow so profound where people gotcha. lack values mm -hmm. so the point is this if you had IQ and skills mm -hmm. to offer to the marketplace, gotcha. you can earn a good income. Being that the most valuable thing about you is mm -hmm. something that you never earned. You didn't earn knowledge, you didn't earn skills. It's your breasts that you paid for and your butthole. So you market that to earn money, which is to say, if I took your brain and placed your brain into a man's body, you would be in poverty. Yeah, but I mean like, you can take anybody's brain and put it in anybody's body. And if all other situations are similar, it's gonna be of course. Like there's, yeah, it's just like so much, there's so much, nothing is being said here that is profound or interesting. It's just stupid. Um, obviously, she must be doing something to make money because there's no shortage of decently attractive women that can go on fans or whatever. Not all of them make money doing it. If you want to make money doing it, usually you have to be something to set yourself apart. Now, I don't know what she does to set herself apart, but if she's making a decent amount of money, it's something. Um, yeah. I'm just good for nothing. Yep, you can't No, you are good for something. That's why you have OnlyFans. And that's my point is that oh, that's what you're good yeah. for. Yeah, and again, like... Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's just stupid. If any of these are like mic drop moments to you, it's just, ugh. And things like prostitution or drugs, if the legalization of those things leads to an increased demand for its illegal counterpart, is it still wise a wise decision to legalize it? Maybe, I mean, you have to balance out a whole bunch of things to figure that out. Like, let's say that there are 100, 10 of them are sex trafficked and 90 of them aren't. And prostitution is illegal. Let's say the situations are really bad for all 100 of these people. Let's say that you legalize 
prostitution and now you have 200 prostitutes. Let's say of those 200, let's say 30 are now sex trafficked and 170 of them are now legal prostitutes. Well, you've increased the absolute value of sex trafficking and you've even increased the percentage of sex trafficking. But let's say of those 170 new prostitutes, let's say all of them now feel way better or way more comfortable and are way more protected in their jobs. In that case, even if you get an absolute and a per capita increase in the amount of sex trafficking, you might be able to argue that the situation is still improved on the whole for everybody, right? It just depends how, how you do the math and, and even like how you would value different things too, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. There, there'd be a lot of things to weigh there, but... You'd agree that actively co-signing and even pushing young girls towards online sex work as a legit career path is probably bad, right? I won't even agree with you because it's such a f***ing retarded, bad faith, stupid f question that you never express concern towards towards anything else that I won't even agree with you. It's like there's such an obvious answer to that and you know what the answer is and it's never a question asked in good faith. It's such a retarded f***ing question. I went on a date this week and I felt the feminism leaving my body. I live on the east side of LA and if you don't know what that means, it's sort of like the artsier part of LA, you know, it's, it's people say it's like Brooklyn and New York. Like, so I go on dates with a lot of men and women who, you know, live over here. There's always a negotiation about who pays and that's great. I like to pay for people, all that. But what I will say is that I sort of fell into going on a date with the most guys guy I've ever been on a date with. And he's from West West, you know, Santa Monica. He's a bro, right? A guys guy is usually not my type. Like I cannot remember the last time that I went on a date with like a straight bros bro. You know what I'm saying? But it befell me. It befell me in an organic fashion. So I'm on this date with this guy. And the thing about a guys guy is he's putting his card down. He's paying for everything. And I really just it sort of activated something feral in me i'm not gonna lie he went to like another bar and he went he was gonna go to the bathroom so i was getting prepared to pay for our drinks because he's been paying all night of course i'm gonna pay for the next round but as he's going to leave for the bathroom he turns to me and he hands me his credit card and he goes here's my card get us whatever <laughs> it might be time for me to get away from all these you know liberal snowflakes on the east side i'm so curious if this I, is a i actually could totally believe that this video is real but this is also like it's the perfect bait video there are like so many different um there are so many different like perfect bait moments in here that it's impossible to tell like yeah um i will say this okay that if you are a super progressive woman and you spent a ton of time only talking to, I don't want to sound mean, but like super soy, effeminate, ultra progressive guys, that if you go on a date with somebody that is more masculine, or if you go on a date with somebody that is more, yeah, I'll just say more masculine, that can actually be a really good feeling where you're like, oh shit, this guy's got a backbone. I don't have to worry about like pronouns or whatever. He just used retarded as a joke. He seems like to be like more confident and assertive and blah, 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 and not like asking me if it would be offensive, blah, blah, blah. Like that actually can be a really good feeling. I've heard this from a lot of progressive women, okay? I hear this all the time, okay? That is super true. So that's why even if this is exaggerating, I do kind of believe it, okay? The thing is, is that people will cite this as like example for why progressive guys suck because they're too effeminate and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and it's actually kind of true. But what you don't see videos of is you can also run into conservative women that when they go on a date with a guy who's not an unbelievably schizoid, emotionally retarded man-child that has no concept of how to hold a conversation, how to not be completely self-centered, and how to uh, be a little bit considerate of the person that they're hanging out with, that's also what a addictive feeling. Uh, because like, oh shit, like I can go on a date with a dude who doesn't make the entire conversation about himself and is actually like, somewhat attentive to the things that I'm saying, right? So this is always, there's always like, I've always said this when I go on these shows and no one believes me. I don't care if no one believes me. Fuck it or whatever. Having a healthy balance of masculine and feminine traits is really important because it helps you catch a whole wide variety of different people because people are attracted to a healthy balance of masculine and feminine traits. If you take a, a super progressive girl who's only been with like effeminate soy boys and throw into a conservative dating pool, she'll like that for a while. But on the flip side, if you take a conservative woman who's only dated like the ultra bravo, uh, you know, fucking schizoid conservative types and throw her into a pool of effeminate guys that are more emotionally in tune, she'll also like that. Um, yeah, it's like, yeah. So women want what they don't have. No, everybody just enjoy it. Like the grass is always greener for everybody. That's not just women. That's men too. That's funny though, that you would assume that men don't also want things they don't have, but okay.